Hi guys, this is Quoth, and I would like to present you my first area farming guide, which will be about Arcane Sanctuary. My last video saw tremendous success, <laughs> and I wanted to share what I've learned during those 1000 runs. I'm going to cover following three parts, why Arcane Sanctuary, Java Zone build that I ended up with, and the how-to part that will combine map considerations, mob killing technique, and inventory management. Hope you like it and it will help you to optimize the runs and improve your experience in this area. So why Arcane Sanctuary you would ask? Well, mainly because it has proven to be a great place for rune farming and very comparable to Chaos and Triangle. I would also argue it beats Chaos Sanctuary, but definitely worse than Lower Kuras chest farming. Also, this method works for Battle.net too, although less efficient due to not hitting flat map only. And again, Arcane Sanctuary has consistent ghost type mobs which have elevated chances for runes, charms and jewelry, due to inability to drop armors and weapons. Highest rune from normal mob is Cham and from the chest Law. Zod is hypothetically possible from the boss packs, but don't count on that. Also, it is one of the best looking locations in the game in my opinion. As for the build, I ended up with Java Zone 99 FCR setup with 85% Pierce and 150 MF. The weapon is Titans and I have uh, two more in the stash because they usually run out after about 5 to 7 runs. Then the Griffins with 15 IS Jewel in it, ideally you also find one with mana per kill. Enigma, Rare Ami with 1 to skills, 10 FCR to hit the 99 breakpoint, 18 Dex and Cold and Lightning Res. Spirit, Silkweave for mana, Ravenfrost for cannot be frozen, Arachnid Mesh for another 20 FCR, and 10 FCR ring with mana steel and uh, resistances. Also, two 320 gloves that can be swapped to 220 with worthy stats. Charms are all about um, basically closing up resistances gaps and uh, torch that you don't really need to use. Cold arms on the swap with uh, again ideally spirit on the on the shield slot. Okay, as for the skill build, we have in javelin skills basically lightning fury maxed with not all the synergies. So I think only uh, the lightning bolt is 26 and not 37. And in a passive because we don't have razor tail. I added way more points into pierce to hit at least 85% chance to pierce. Okay, let's talk about map. So flat layout is the only real option. No bottom right, UI is actually bad for teleporting this way. Other layouts make it hard to keep ghosts over the ground. With summoner or with super chest, it is up to you. Both are not recommended for efficiency, but can be added for fun or keys if you need them. Middle platform is also skipped. Easier to keep consistent circular flow over many runs in my experience. If you are saving and exiting after a circle, then look for a good rogue camp map. For example, easy access to Kine if you need to identify items and no objects towards waypoint. Alternatively, you can go to Act 4 Fortress in the end of the runs. Ideally, you do not want to pick up waypoints around Arcane Sanctuary, Canyon of the Magi and Palace Cellar or few more for easily picking Arcane Sanctuary. So here are 5 general points that improved my efficiency by about 10 seconds and also made it enjoyable to play. Number 1. Teleport ideally straight line, since all the ghosts are spawned over a platform and only get out of it due to player actions and the player position, making their path go over the void. Teleport behind the entire pack or platform, this way you can assess the situation and prepare for the throw. And on top, all the mobs on the screen will start moving towards you, eliminating the chances of having stragglers. Also, you can spot the danger and TP out if needed, and ghosts will usually move towards your previous position when they saw you first, and group better because of that. Number 3. Throwing backwards ensures that no ghost will be disturbed by lightning fury on the next platform and start wandering aimlessly, increasing the time to kill them. 4. Generally kill all ghosts that are not stragglers, for example far in the void and one or two of them, and larger groups of goats. 
Skip lords entirely. Don't waste time finishing up 1 to 3 goats after you've blown up the entire screen as well. And last and most important, throw. But seriously, for Amazon attack speed frames are way faster than cast rate or hit recovery, which makes it much easier to get out of danger by blowing the entire screen up, for which you will normally need 1 or 2 throws. Alright, let's talk about picking up stuff. Of course, it's up to you and your needs on what to pick up. In any case, I recommend having 3x4 or better 4x4 space for loot in the inventory, for faster management. Also with your stash, especially if you have shift click transfer option. Having cube only is useful if you pick up almost nothing. As for useful items to pick up, here is my personal list. Crafting gems, rubies, amethysts, skulls, grand and small charms, jewels, rare and unique rings, set and unique amulets, crafting or lamp plus runes, worthy or grail uniques and set items, keys from summoner if needed, and some worthy rares like gloves, boots, druid belts, sword corps, and some assassin clothes. And useful tip for plaggy users, use command slash sp space xx when managing stash, to swap your first page that opens by default with a page xx. This makes stash and loot storage much faster and less annoying. And finally, do not use torch. Too much visual clutter because of a firestorm makes it really hard to pick up items fast. And you don't need those additional skills. As for the benchmark, below 60 seconds on player 7 is a good time to aim for real rune farming efficiency. And here are a couple of sample runs just to illustrate majority of what I've said. That will wrap up the video. Let me know in the comments if you found it useful or interesting, also if you have any specific suggestion for this kind of format. Thank you for watching and have a good day.